the ones that have been handed down to us. So, um, you know, and there's, there's issues like that in it that I think, you know, still probably deserve attention. Uh, and in actual fact, because of various issues, I'm actually going to be rewriting that book, um, a fairly heavy rewrite with some new stuff in it. And a lot of the old, it was quite a long book, so I'm going to take some of the older stuff out. Uh, and re-releasing it under the title of The History of the Soul because there's some new information, I think, that's come forward that I'd like to sort of bring to bear on this and sort of, you know, bring it up to date, as it were, as a new edition. So, uh, right. There's hope for it to gain proper attention yet. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, so you've you've done these first two books and then you came out with The Book of the Soul uh, yeah. in 2007, I believe. Absolutely. Um by now, would you say your your views on spirituality had changed? Because you you obviously came up with the notion of rational spirit spirituality. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, they hadn't changed much as they just no. crystallised, Mark. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm. So, what what would you uh, explain rational spirituality as being then? Um, well, basically, the, the the way I came at it was that. When I was researching for Genesis Unveiled, um, I already had, a, 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 one way or another, I'd been exposed to the idea of reincarnation and karma and that sort of thing, and I'd started to sort of feel quite comfortable with those ideas, um, to the extent that I understood them then. But uh, uh, Virgin, my publishers at the time, um, when they finally accepted Genesis Unveiled, they said, look, you know, you're talking about your interpretation of these ancient texts and traditions is all within this spiritual context of reincarnation and karma. But you haven't really given it, and you say there's evidence for it and stuff, but you haven't really mentioned any of this evidence to support those ideas. So I had to insert a whole new chapter, and that was when I started to pull together the evidence, if you like, for uh, a reincarnatory worldview. And it was from that, and a lot of people liked that chapter in particular, even though it wasn't really my work, it has to be said. So it was from that that I thought, this is really the where I have to go from now on. And uh, I did a lot more research. And um, so uh, what I was suggesting, and still am, is that you can ground a spiritual worldview in the solid, fertile soil, as it were, of evidence and particularly modern evidence from things like near-death experiences and children who remember past lives and also from some past life regression cases with adults where there is obscure the, the big thing that I always concentrate on is obscure and verifiable information and uh, it's uh, it, it's the cases that have this very obscure information which still ends up being uh, verified that I think give us this very strong evidence to support a spiritual worldview. And then once you have that grounding, there are various uh, sort of assumptions you can, or maybe um, you know, uh, propositions you can produce from that. Um, and I ended up sort of over time uh, uh, um, uh, filtering out, if you like, a set of 10 propositions, which I think uh, basically uh, exp uh, expand what, what rational spirituality is. Um, and... Uh, but uh, the one thing I would emphasize is because sometimes when people hear this phrase rational spirituality, it doesn't gel with them. And what I'm saying is, although I'm trying to ground spirituality in, in hard evidence, it's, I'm not suggesting for a moment that everything spiritual can be uh, reduced to um, evidential things and brought in, you know, uh, 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 and analyzed in that way. Of course, you know, the most important aspects of spirituality are the, the transcendental uh, aspects, um, which, you know, are very hard to explain properly. Um, but I'm just saying that it's important to ground spirituality in evidence at, at this time because I think we can. And then when you get people like Richard Dawkins suggesting that you know anything other than a materialist worldview is the uh, is the, really the only intelligent worldview to adopt if you've got half a brain cell, well you can reply and say, well I'm sorry, that's really not true. In fact, with the evidence that we've now got on the table, it's much more logical to have a spiritual worldview, and it's much more irrational to to continue to put forward and protect a materialist worldview, which really isn't supported by the evidence anymore. Um, I notice in the introduction for the Book of the Soul that you actually underwent past life regression. Mm. How, what sort of was that like as an experience and did that influence a lot of your, your thinking, your present thinking? It didn't really. Um, it was just something that I very much felt I should do as part of my research for the book. Um, and um, I came down after a couple of false starts. I ended up finding a chap called Andy Tomlinson who 
um, I ended up writing my next book, The Wisdom of the Soul, with and um, uh, and Andy and I. Uh, well, Andy runs the Past Life Regression Academy. In fact, I've just completed my own training as a regression therapist as well now. So under uh, Andy's academy, so we've become very good friends. Um, but um, um, so it was him that I found, and I came down to see him in uh, uh, in uh, his home in uh, Dorset and um, was lucky enough to be lying on the couch and going to this experience of being tortured during the Inquisition, which was very pleasant. And <laughs> especially, I can thoroughly recommend reliving having your fingernails pulled out one by one. Um, but it, actually, but so as not to put people off, uh, I mean, you know, although there was emotion coming out while this was happening, um, you know, I was to some extent protected, even though I was in the trance state and remembering this stuff. I wasn't fully, fully reliving it, um, and most people don't. So you only tend to if there's really, it's important from a soul perspective that you do really relive something. And then if you do it with a very trained person, you can, um, it can be healed and, and uh, worked with. So I don't want to put people off, but um, yeah, it was certainly an interesting experience and, and quite a vivid one. And um, and it felt pretty authentic to me, but there, there certainly there was nothing that, in terms of detail that came up in it that I couldn't have made up from my imagination. So I've never suggested that my own personal experiences uh, in any sense um, uh, add to the body of evidence for rational spirituality. It was just it was, a, it was an important experience for me personally. Um, I noticed you actually published this book yourself. Did, I'm surprised that none of the big publishers were interested in publishing it. Well, it's funny because, you know, publishing is a difficult game at the moment and, uh, and has been for a few years now. And uh, in fact, it's quite a funny story because when Genesis Unveiled was published by Virgin, I'd actually put the synopsis or proposal for Genesis Unveiled to them many years before, back in around about sort of 2000, 2001, I think. And they rejected it at that point. Um, and then by about 2004, I had completely written the book and I'd already published it online. But it was, you know, I wasn't very happy with that. And I approached Virgin again, sort of thinking, well, they might have completely forgotten by now, which they kind of had. And uh, I was still dealing with the same editor. I mean, she remembered, but that was OK. She was on side with me. And um, but there was a new sales director who was an ex-car salesman, apparently. And uh people would be probably quite fascinated to learn that, you know, these publishing companies are under tremendous pressure and they get an awful lot of proposals for books. So when they're having a, what they call an acquisitions meeting to consider what books they're going to acquire, they literally give them like 30 seconds each. They don't have more time than that. And they literally have a half page bit of information about the proposed book and they make a decision there and then. But with Genesis unveiled, apparently this chap who was an ex-car salesman was uh, sort of fairly rough and ready, but obviously a very good salesman. I'll use the polite language, but he said, well, his last book did okay, so I suppose he might as well have a crack at this one. And I don't think they really read the synopsis at all. So at that point, then the book was taken on by them properly. And um, uh, and even even then, to sell the book into Virgin, I had to tone down the spiritual aspects of it in the summary. I mean, I didn't tone it down in the book itself, but you know, they they would have, they would have been put off by making it too overtly spiritual. And certainly when it came to my much, you know, more obviously spiritual books like The Book of the Soul, um, they just didn't want to publish it. And that's OK. They didn't feel it was their kind of material. And uh, and it's a very, you know, it, when you move away from ancient history into proper spiritual books, it's um, it's a very, very crowded and a very, very competitive market. Um, and even with all the love in the world, you know, the honest truth is that there's a huge amount of absolute nonsense being published, to be honest, but that's just the way it goes. But it just makes it a very, very crowded market where it's very difficult for the good stuff to get through. Um, and in the end, I had to take the decision to go uh, uh, to, to publish personally, and, and I, I don't regret that. It may still be the books will end up with a publisher at some point, but, um, uh, you know, they're finally getting their... They're getting their day in the sun. I've got. Uh, I've just been. Um, uh, well, I say fortunate enough, but finally Barnes and Noble have agreed to take all of my books over in the United States, so they'll be properly stocked in the biggest books uh, book chain over there. And I'm pretty sure the Waterstones will do the same over here now on the back of that. So they will finally get their proper airing. So, you know, it's all as it should be. But um, yeah, the the, the self publishing route is it's a hard one. It's not an easy one. I, I would recommend you have to have a great deal of patience and not too many expectations to anybody who's going to do it. So in in the book of the soul, you argued the case for both reincarnation and karma, mm. and you also explored the idea of past life regression. Um, yeah. With when you were, were doing your research with the um, past life regressions, you went even further back to the notion of an interlife. 
Yeah. That, that came out more in your next book, The Wisdom of the Soul. Could you explain a 